Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is Valid Mountain Array. So in this question, we are given an array of integers. We have to return true if and only if that array is a valid mountain array. An array is said to be a mountain array if and only if the length of the array is greater than or equal to 3 and there exists a peak element where all the elements to the left of the peak element are strictly increasing and all the elements to the right of the peak element are strictly decreasing. The meaning of strictly increasing has been displayed here. This means that they are increasing in nature but they are not strictly increasing. Two adjacent elements are strictly increasing when the right element is greater than the left element. So let's take a look at this example and see how the logic can be implemented. So this is the array given to us. Let's follow the steps. First step, we'll start off by checking the length of the array. If the length of the array is less than 3, then we can return false because they have mentioned that a valid mountain array will have length greater than or equal to 3. Here the length is 8 so this condition has been satisfied. Let's proceed further. We'll start off by creating a pointer i which points at the index position 0. So we'll create a pointer where i will be pointing at the 0th index position that is here. The third step is to place a second pointer j which will be pointing at the length minus 1 index position. So length is 8, length minus 1 is 7. So index position 7 is here. So now that we have the two pointers pointing at the respective positions, we have to iterate the left pointer from left to right and we have to iterate the j pointer that is the right pointer from right to left and we have to reach the peak element that is in this example this is the peak element right that is the peak of the mountain so once you iterate from left to right you have to reach a peak element and you iterate from right to left for this pointer and you also reach the peak element after the end of the iteration if i and j both point at the peak element then it is a valid mountain array so you can find out the peak element until this condition fails for the i pointer and until this condition fails for the j pointer we are checking if two adjacent elements are strictly increasing here you can see that i will start from 0 right so we are checking these two elements arr of i plus 1 that is 0 plus 1 is arr of 1 that is pointing at this element so 2 is greater than 0 so you increment i by 1 and then you are checking for these two elements you are checking if 3 is greater than 2 yes it is greater so you are incrementing i so i now has 2 again we are checking for these two elements 4 is greater than 3 so you increment i and now you check for these two elements 5 is greater than 4 so you increment i now you check for these two elements 2 is not greater than 5 so you break the iteration for the i pointer the final value of i is index position 4 so i is here now now let's do the same for j you have to check if the previous element is greater than the next element 1 is greater than 0 j is initially length minus 1 right so you decrement j you check for these two elements 2 is greater than 1 so you decrement j now j is pointing here right this condition will fail so j is now at 4 now we are checking if both i and j pointer point at the peak element will return true else will return false before checking if both i and j pointer point at the peak element we have to check if i and j are not in their initialized position so we have to check that i and j are not in the same position because if you take a sorted array, this logic will pass. So if you take this example according to our logic, I will point here right and J will point here and it will keep on checking for each adjacent element for I. I has reached here. Now J won't go to the left because this element should be greater but it is not. So J will remain here. So according to the condition, I is equal to J for this also. But the condition should fail because this is not a valid mountain array. Array is looking like this. For a valid mountain array, it should look like this, right? There should be a peak element. There should be something to the right. Here in this case also, I is equal to J. That is why we have to check this condition. If I and J are not in their initialized position, I should not remain at 0 and J should not remain at len minus 1. So let's implement these steps in a Java program. First, let's find the length of the array. Now we have to check if the length of the array is greater than or equal to 3. If it is less, we have to return false. If length is less than 3, return false. Now let's initialize the two pointers i and j. i will be pointing at 0th index position and j will be pointing at length minus 1 index position. Now let's check for the i pointer if it is strictly increasing until peak. So while ARR of i is less than ARR of i plus 1, we have to increment i. 
also we have to check if i plus 1 is not going out of bounds so i plus 1 should be always less than the length of the array so i plus 1 is less than length and arr of i is less than arr of i plus 1 now let's do the check for the j pointer that all the elements to the right of the peak are strictly decreasing so why so arr of j minus 1 is greater than arr of j also we have to check if j always greater than 0 so it should not go out of bounds at the leftmost position so j should always be greater than 0 so whenever this condition pass you have to decrement j right now we have to check if i and j are both pointing at the peak element then we can return true as I have said, this will return true for a sorted array also. So we have to check if i and j are not in their initial positions before checking this. So before this if statement, let's do one more check. If, if i is greater than 0 and j is less than length minus 1. So with this we are checking that the left pointer has moved at least once and the right pointer has also moved at least once to the left. So with this we are checking they are not in their initialized position like we have initialized here. So if i and j are not pointing at the same index, you can return false. Now let's try to run the code. There you have it, we are getting the expected output. Let's submit the code. There you have it, our solution has been accepted. That's it guys, that's the end of the program. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.